Now in Los Angeles, Dakin tried to take over the city's criminal underworld in the power vacuum left behind by the fall of the Pride. While attending a party at the home of prominent movie star Marcus Rostin, Dakin was given a drug called Heat, which he was very surprised to discover had a stronger effect on him than any drug ever had before. He began a relationship with Rostin, who turned out to be the distributor of Heat. Soon after, Donna Keel, an FBI agent who was determined to arrest Dakin, attempted to confront him at Rostin's home, but Dakin evaded her. Dakin became rapidly addicted to the heat, and during his attempt to become the head of the criminal underworld by pulling off a more audacious heist than any in LA's history, he failed due to hallucinations and a failing of his healing factor caused by the drug. While attempting to escape the scene of the botched heist, Dakin was caught by Donna. Rather than alerting the other authorities, she began interrogating him regarding a string of grisly homicides, and Dakin discovered that somebody was deliberately framing him for a murder spree. After being convinced that Dakin wasn't behind the serial killings, Donna agreed to team up with him to solve them. The Claws serial killer continued to cause carnage in the dark areas of the Hollywood Hills and the heat's grip on Dakin was growing daily, scarring his mind and body. Local superhero Moon Knight came after Dakin, initially believing him to be the killer. During their fight, a combination of the effects of the heat and taunting by Moon Knight caused Dakin to become badly triggered and believe that he was fighting his father. The killer was revealed to be Rostin. He used the addictive properties of heat to take control of Donna. At Rostin's direction, Donna reported to her superiors that Dakin was the Claws killer and made him the most wanted man in America putting the LAPD and the FBI on his trail, even calling in an airstrike on the house where he was living. While seeking answers for how to defeat Rostin, Dakin stumbled into the home of the runaways. Chase Stein knew of Rostin as a former agent of the Pride, and the runaways made an alliance with Dakin and together they took him down. Donna, who was left an emotional wreck after her experiences with Dakin, Rostin, and Heat, met Dakin at a diner to discuss their future. Donna believed she was in love with him but was convinced he was a monster. Dakin suggested she was the same and provided her with an opportunity to kill three men involved in human trafficking. She instead turned her gun on Dakin who reacted because his healing factor was not working, slicing her hand off, and escaped. The heat had ravaged Dakin's body, costing him his healing factor, his control over both Madripoor and the LA underground, and would soon cost him his life. He returned to New York to go out with a bang, drugging his father and taking him to watch his show. He bombed the headquarters of the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, installed bombs around the city, and drugged and easily subdued Mr. Fantastic. After a long battle with the heroes of the city he began to succumb to his illness. Confronted by his father, he hugged him and asked him to forgive him. Before Logan could say anything. Dakin scornfully told him he had placed a bomb on a timer at the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning and blew himself up, leaving no body to bury. Wolverine rushed to his school to find nothing but a little doll of him, as Dakin's plan had been to leave Wolverine to forever wonder what his son's true intentions had been. Dakin somehow returned from the dead and was one of several villains invited to Sabretooth's birthday party in Madripoor. Wolverine heard about it and decided to crash this party. He defeated Dakin and the other villains present before wishing a happy birthday to Sabretooth, in honor of Sabretooth's tradition of thrashing Wolverine every year on his birthday. 